<laughs> Universal Analytics ends on July 1st. Essential information you need. That, that we did, we, I just told you the essential information you need. It ends on July 1st. Anyway, SEO visibility in 2024. Review sites decline. E-commerce and user-generated content rise. Google releases the June 2024 spam update and destroys Barry Schwartz with it. Lily Ray's new rabbit hole, a post on LinkedIn. You're listening to News from the Edge for the week of June 24th, 2024, here on Edge of the Web Radio. We're here wherever you can your podcast. From the Edge of the Web Studios, here's what we're looking at this week. I, I just want to start, I hate reading scripts. The second I see script, I see destroy it. Destroy the script. And now I even lost the tab where the script is, so I'm completely off script. Oh, welcome to the Site Strategics Digital Marketing News Desk of Edge of the Web, whatever that is. We're proud to have Site Strategics on as the title sponsor of Edge of the Web, one of the top SEO companies in the Midwest. If you're going to go for it, Aaron, go the top SEO company in the entire Midwest. The team at Site Strategics are constant learners, and the reason for this show, I'll talk more about them later on depending upon where the slides are joining me this week is not aaron sparks aaron sparks is somewhere in charles branson mississippi or missouri whatever the hell he is some people go to california on their vacations and some people go to missouri on their vacations. so we've improved the show tremendously the one the only the king of all the the best seo on the planet near me andrew optimizing only near you? Okay, that narrows the But you're the only I, SEO I'm only... right now. <laughs> well, okay, not that near. Keep it sure. up and I'll I mean, move near, your pin. Near enough. I'll, I'll move that pin if you get, keep the snark up. Uh, okay, I see. That I see. We're previewing pin stories like now. Okay, fine, fine. Hundreds of miles away. In a lake, apparently. A lake. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't do a lot of local SEO. Y'all, that's like the wild, wild west of SEO, and it's 2024. We'll get to that later. So what, what brings you to uh to the show? Well, so I was at a loose end, and then a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, Morty's doing this show, and like you know, we need somebody sensible to kind of balance things out a bit. Could you spare a few minutes? I, and I said, yeah, sure. How's it going for you? Oh, it's early days. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something you want to pitch? I, I By the way, I feel it's our obligation to set this podcast on fire while Aaron is away. Okay, so um, WFS Fest is coming to America, Women in Tech SEO. I think we need to promote that. So at the time of writing, there's about 40 tickets left. So, you know, when, when you Good. listen to this podcast, go buy one. Can we nice. do that? Yeah. Free 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 um, plugs while Aaron's, Aaron's away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. While we're at it, we're running an event at the Wix Playground with Search Engine Journal. So come check out Lily Ray, Carrie Rose, Terry Rice, John Shahada, George Wynn, Nick Eubanks. I'm missing a whole bunch of people. Dominica Octavio from Journey Further. As we talk about how you can leverage the power of branding to find better clients for yourselves. Nice. July 22nd. For times like this, I wish I lived in America. There's yeah. not very many of them, but some. Well, you know, you have a lot of going on in England for you, like uh, tea. <laughs> yeah, not enough you're, of that. Yeah, the tea is really good there. It's great. I don't drink tea. Yeah. I know. You don't drink tea and you don't eat Marmite. That's why you could never be British. By the way, like, yeah, thank you for the Marmite. Mm, appreciate sure. it. Sure. It's delicious. I, I, I saw how much you appreciated that. If anybody hasn't seen that video, it's still one that brings me a lot of joy. It was a lot of, it was a lot of fun after <laughs> the case went away. I guess, oh, joining us also, as always, is, I don't know what, let me find the slides. Dude, wait, he didn't put a thing in for himself. I don't get a slide. You you what? usually get an intro. You get a thing like, oh, chief button pusher. Or... Yeah. I think I, Aaron, I get that with just CEO you and me. I, I, yeah, I guess I got a slide with just you and me. But it was you and Andrew, so I didn't get a slide. I'm here. Wow. Jacob Mann is back from a real vacation in California. <laughs> a real Woo. vacation. Yeah, and like Brunson, Missouri. <laughs> It was fun. I didn't even know where that is. Oh, uh, California's on the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> of America. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And uh, New York's on the other side, and somewhere in between is Missouri. I, I feel like it's, we yeah. can make fun of Missouri, because like, what's the worst that happens? We lose, like, two listeners. <laughs> Do they have the internet there? there? <laughs> they have Not the yet. internet. Uh, they're getting SEO next week. Oh. All right. Yeah. There you go. Get all their links optimized. Okay, let's get to the news. First up from Search Engine Land, 
Google turns <sighs> off or will turn off, depending upon when you're listening to this podcast, Universal Analytics on July 1st what? of this year. Yes. Why didn't they warn you, us? I don't know. You have two options. Don't use anything or don't use anything. Those are your only options. I mean, I guess you could use GA4 if you could figure it out. I mean, can we say, I'm sure we've covered this a lot. GA4 can get in the C. It, it I don't like it GA4. But yeah, if you've got historical data in Google Analytics, the old school one, and you really miss it like me and kind of mourn every day, go get your data, talk to your data nerds, see if you, they can export it for you. There's some nice plugins for Google Sheets. You can just dump a load of data in there because that whole historical thing is going away, like really, really going away this time. But they said we're going to kill it, and then they get, they don't, and they do, and they don't. But then there's the big ticking thick clock in GA4 that says this is going away. It's going away really soon, really, really going away, really, really, really probably. Do you, do you guys until think there are people who are hearing this right now for the first time, or who are like making plans right now for the first time? I mean, I guess. Go, yeah, wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's possible, but like, <laughs> when did that happen? You there's know. definitely yeah. people that have kicked it down the road. There's yeah. definitely people that have said, I'll, I'll oh, sort that. Yeah, yeah. July 1st is ages that's, away. It'll be fine. I'll week. export. Oh, I'll do the export do right near the end. It'll be unbelievable. It's coming. Oops. The end is coming. For those people, I just want to give you a heads up. The thing you were able to do in like, I don't know, one or two clicks will now take you 45 minutes, not to find, but to custom set up. So good luck. And just use the analytics in your CMS. And be done with it. That's my best advice for you. I swear to God. Yeah. All right. On to article number two. This one from Amsiv. SEO visibility shifts in review sites to e-commerce and user-generated content sites in 2024. Lily Ray has been tracking the rankings of a lot of product review-related queries. Things like, you know, like, what's the best laptop or best laptop, right? Actually, they're commerce queries. So best laptop, or I don't know, buy jeans, or I don't know, buy a shirt, or buy a book. I could keep going on for a while. Buy a mouse. And a lot of the URLs that were ranking used to be for product review sites, which are basically affiliate spam, in my opinion. Some of them are. Some of them are good. Like the wire cutter is good. Just go to the wire cutter if you're looking for product review on something. Don't even go to Google. But now... Lily is noticing that a lot of those ranking websites are the actual products themselves. Now, one could argue that's an intent shift. So back in the day, you used to track the keyword, buy car insurance. And it used to be, originally, you could only buy car insurance, like Geico, Allstate, I don't know, the General, whatever it is. I don't know what we have in England. But then around 2018, the intent shifted, and it was like half the SERP was place where you can buy the actual car insurance, and then half the SERP was like, how do I pick the best car insurance policy? Or what are the best car insurance policies? So sometimes intent can shift. I think in this case, Google is at war with affiliate marketers. Yeah. How's that going for them, do you think? Are they winning? The affiliate marketers? No. No, I think no, Google. The marketers are losing. Yeah. I think they're losing. You saw the thing. It was someone tweeted out. I know Lily and Glenn Gade retweeted it. Barry covered it in the SEO news today. We covered it and it's new. Daily SEO series, which I'm pitching on this podcast, which is probably a conflict of interest. And oh, <laughs> uh, while you're at it, go check out Marketing O'Clock also. Anyway, I forgot who it was originally who put it out, but it was basically when you search for best, I don't know, point earning credit card, you don't even get the websites anymore. You get the actual credit cards and the knowledge panel pops up when you click on one of the cards. So Google's like, hey, affiliate sites. Bye-bye. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so first of all, can we have a big word of praise for Lily? Because she takes a lot of stick from some weird people in SEO, in the SEO industry. And I think she's great. I think most of us of a right mind think she's great. She does all her working in public. She shares all this stuff. She's, you know, taking Basically, some shots for lots of us. Pedophile, you think she's great. Here's looking yeah. at you. Anyway. And then we have so, to but Lily's great. Now. She does all this stuff in public. And I think yeah, the kind of stuff that she's then sharing, I think, yeah, your kind of points about the intent shift. It's kind of interesting. Like, is that Google then deliberately kind of sh kicking the shins of affiliate marketers? Maybe. Is it just them kind of moderating around user behaviors? It's like, you know, they have all this kind of user feedback stuff that we're now supposedly seeing for the first time. Like, oh my God, user behavior influences search. Who knew? But it's like, you know, when you go to those sites and it's like you're looking for, in Lily's example, a bird feeder. 
and you get to one that says here's the top 10 bird feeders and like you know then they do a long ramble about how the best bird feeders were tested in their garden and their grandmother loves birds and you just go back to the surf and you I just want to buy a bird feeder please for the love of Christ let me find a bird feeder and just give you some money <laughs> and so yeah now Google's then showing you just more places where you can hey novelty buy the thing you're looking for usually I feel bad right usually I feel like you know websites aren't going to get clicks in this case do your voodoo that you do Google go for it I I told Barry this morning when we recorded about the uh, the credit card thing, I'm like, you know what I'm really going to miss? I'm really going to miss some random, you know, quote unquote, news website covering the top 20 travel credit cards that you need this summer and full of their affiliate marketing crap. I'm really going to miss reading that. It was good reading. <laughs> yeah, right. As, I, I mean, I, it's it's interesting. I think it is interesting is kind of how Google are going about this kind of stuff. You know, we're going to come on to their kind of spam algo updates again, another one all these updates all stacking back to back and stuff but it's like yeah this kind of intent shift i think is it's an interesting one to follow and it's like so what do you do about that as a site owner and i still think even when you look at the ones like you know, the examples that lily's got the great stuff is because she does all her work in public you can go and look at these for yourself and it's not all just bird feeders it's not all just like here's a buy but there are a few like how do you choose the best bird feeder and like you know what like which is the best bird feeder if you want these kind of birds or what's the best bird feeder if you're trying to spend less than a hundred dollars or whatever it is there are a few of those still in there but there's not nearly so many it's definitely far far fewer and there's like much more authoritative stuff like you would expect there from in the uk like the royal society for the protection of birds they've got some really good stuff on like bird feeders because hey they're experts in this field rather than you know bird feeders are us affiliate.com not so much. Was, you know, now it kind of all makes sense why, like, there's certain SEOs going after Lily Ray because she's talking about the seedier side of SEO, right? Not doing their thing. I saw, um, I saw, and, so I saw a great meme. You know, the meme of the guy like who puts the stick in his spokes on his bike. He's kind of cycling along, and you know, it's all it's Mark. Mark Williams Cook shared it. Credit to Mark. It was like, oh, you know, all the black hat affiliate marketers peddling right. stuff and spamming <laughs> the hell out of Google, and then like, you know. They're boasting about it on YouTube and, and then they stick this big stick in their yeah. spokes and they fall off their bike and they're like, damn you, Lily Ray. I was talking to Glenn Gibb about because we're like, I can't believe these SEOs are going after Lily. What the hell's wrong with them? And that I don't even get it because they'll go on, they'll go on like, I don't know, Twitter or wherever, and they'll post like, buy my spammy links from me. Here's all the sites I'm gonna get you. I'm like, Google go to this dude's website and be like, okay, let's manual action this website and this website and this website and that website. What are you upset about? You're broadcasting the damn thing. And then when someone's like, you know, hey, you're this person's doing that, you're like, oh, you're all upset. But it's Lily's all there, right? Freaking link builders, burning hell, all of you. Anyway, <laughs> on to the live read. We're proud to have Site Strategics as a sponsor of Edge of the Web. Here's a question. How do you create that authoritative subject matter expertise that we know that Google is looking for? Learning from your client is always the place, but organizing a well thought through interview process is time consuming. Site Strategics has developed an SME interview process that is backed by our years of interview techniques as well as SEO research and buyer's journey persona definition. You can bring us in as an SEO SWAT team, extracting incredible knowledge, voice, and passion of the SMEs for your use. Site Strategics can deliver a targeted series of questions and goals for the interview work organically through great conversations and provide a set of deliverables that you can take to omni-channel development, such as video content, audio content, transcripts, blog posts, structural content, and social, all from the untapped knowledge of your subject matter experts. Find out more. If you're interested in what we can do for you, visit edgeofthewebradio.com slash site. We'd love to share some great successes with you. Remember, it's not you, it's me. News article number three. From search engine land, Google unleashes at Barry Schwartz. Sorry, that wasn't the title. Google unleashes June 2024 spam update. Google released its June 2024 spam updates. SEOs were all over the internet saying, oh, this must be the algorithmic version of the Parasite SEO, or that Google's calling the site reputation update. And Barry Schwartz, bless his very large soul and heart went on to x formerly known as twitter and said hey danny sullivan search liaison is this spam update the algorithmic implementation of the site reputation update 
and get your bleeping thing out, Jacob, because Danny Sullivan basically said, fuck you, Barry, shove it up your ass. Don't ask me those fucking questions, you stupid piece of shit. Or words to that and, effect. Yeah, it was something like that. To which Barry replied, I am a failure, or something like that. Barry asked what we were all wondering and thinking about, and people were spreading misinformation all over the... I was in multiple Slack groups, like, yeah, this is it. This is the site reputation abuse thing. It's not. Thank you, Barry, for getting the clarification that we needed to see that it's not that. It's just your regular spam update. So unless you're the people who are criticizing Lily Ray, you've got nothing to worry about. Well, I think if you're the people that criticize Lily Ray, you've got stuff to worry about, but not this. Well, and this. And, and this, this, too. And this? Okay. <laughs> but not the site reputation update. I Maybe was literally too. going around back channel, like, messing. I'll give you a dollar to ask Danny again. <laughs> <laughs> Just get chat, uh, chat, chat GBT to rephrase the question and ask it again. <laughs> I should have, like, spun up, like, Twitter bots. Like, ask. I mean, like, to, like, 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 look, it does get annoying to hear the same question over and over again. I mean, like, you know, I'm, and Barry is a big fat jerk. So obviously it makes sense to reply back to Barry like that. So I do understand where Danny's coming from, other than the fact that Barry's not a jerk and it makes sense to whatever. The spam updates out there. I don't know, like, is there anything else to really say about it? I don't know. But I want to have a dip about the whole Google clustering updates again thing. It just bugs me. I mean, I know and that, that they do it on purpose, right? There's no, no, kind no, of, no, they said. No, it's just coincidence. Said. Sure. I mean, no. if you've ever worked with the dev team and got them to try and release one minor thing, like on time, the, all the huge work, that's a huge amount. To get them to do two major things really close together. I know Google have developers coming out the wazoo and stuff, but doing two major releases so close together is really hard work. And devs are generally very resistant to this sort of thing because there are lots of things that could go wrong. So the fact Not that they keep clustering these updates so close together, it's it's obfuscation. It just I makes it really to hard to Friday. find out, you know, did thing go up or down because of A or B? Who knows? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just create great content. Yeah. Google's got it. <laughs> yeah, glue in their pizza. AI overview. Shut up, put glue in your pizza. Shut up and drink urine. <laughs> One quarter a day. Yep. <laughs> just a quarter? Is it a quarter? I can't remember. It was a lot. <laughs> more, more, more than I'm happy to drink, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it, was two, it was two liters, I think, or something like that. Or two pints. Whoa. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we deal in pints in the UK. That's that's a lot. Did you see the one? I Lily shared it on. Um, I mentioned it last week on the episode. I mentioned it again. It was so good. It was one where they asked, like, "What do astronauts do?" And basically, the reply back was like, "Fornicate," but it didn't say fornicate. It used the drop <laughs> yeah. game with something else and repeat. And then it said like, you know, like so, like back off, all you lame ass mother. It's inside of the AI overview. Great where do stuff. I where do I sign up? No wonder <laughs> yeah, they do so much training. I, I miss my calling to be an astronaut. Oh my god, <laughs> I totally should have been an astronaut. Sounds like a lot of fun. In gaming sounds great. Yeah, and repeating, and like, they get paid so much too. And look, it doesn't sound. Wait, like was the answer like the eat sleep, money. eat sleep, drink, repeat, like or eat sleep dance repeat? What's the what's the song? Oh, eat sleep rave repeat. That's the song. It was it was that right. the answer? But what well, well, with fornication? Sure. With fornication, yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, that, that'll, that'll bring up news article number four, which is not a news article. It's a LinkedIn post from Lily Ray. Lily went and showed, she, she says, her new rabbit hole, quote, something appears to have changed on Google in the last six to eight months that is causing international sites, particularly Indian sites with English content, to rank extremely well in Google search and Google Discover. Basically, I think it was at the time, I, I don't know, IndiaTimes.com. Um, sees a huge organic boost. They seem to be ranking for all sorts of stuff. And Lily's thinking that they're creating a ton of AI content also, and it's just outranking everybody. I blame the link builders. It's usually their fault, right? Yeah, yeah like, probably. <laughs> yeah, this is a weird one. I don't, I mean, I know Lily's kind of still digging into this kind of stuff. And this is again, her kind of working in public. So they've already been, I've been kind of following this just today of like people saying, oh, actually, it's not just this. It's, it's the other way around too. Like lots of US sites showing up in India for searches where, People in India are like, well, this isn't relevant to me. I don't care what's happening in Kansas or whatever. So it's, it seems something is a little bit amiss in Google, whether like one of the, you know, I don't know if you know this, but there's a hell of a lot of people live in India. So if it's kind of user signals, then maybe something's been dialed up a little bit too much. And the oh. several million, billion people that live in India maybe is pushing things where they shouldn't be. I've seen some of this. There's some interesting stuff. So the BBC news service, so you all know, heard of the BBC, right? But they have a pigeon news service. 
not pigeons the animals, but like pigeon the sort of African dialect, which is kind of loosely based on English, but is very much its own language. But in the headlines and the sort of meta titles and things, it can look very, 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 very similar to English. So there's times where it shows up in my Discover feed where there'll be this story saying, oh, there's this exciting thing happening. And I'll click it and you'll get through and you'll be like, I can't understand. I don't know what this article is talking about because the headlines draw me in and Google's obviously picked it up and it's, oh, it's from the BBC. It's an authoritative source. And you go to this story and it's like, no, I can understand like every third word. So it's, it's, I, I don't know if there's something there kind of weird, like with these big authoritative sites in India have a lot of authority. They have a lot of links, Morty. Um, they do. I don't know. There's something five. weird going on. I, Google's always had a hard time with like language targeting, geo targeting. I get all sorts of like languages sometimes randomly showing up in my in my Discover feed. I've had that before. I've had knowledge panels in different languages. There was a whole like back and forth with Danny Sullivan about this a while ago. But interesting to see, and it kind of sucks because it doesn't seem like it's great as content. It'd be like one thing like this is great content, not exactly applicable because of the geo, but like I get why this would be there because it's really good content, but it doesn't seem to be that it's great content either. So. What's but it's that? just this whole thing where they're using like Google's working on different algorithms in different systems, like search has one and Google discover has one and like AI overviews is working on a different system. And it's just opening up all these different kind of almost like attack faces for people that know which levers to pull in which areas, Oh, you can rank in Google discover and over and overnight get yourself a boatload of traffic because Google discover shows up everywhere now. And if your right. story shows up, people click it or you get visibility or you get attention or something. Yeah, it's just it seems a little bit easy to game. It does seem a little bit easy to game. And I like Discover. I actually deleted Facebook from my phone because I can't stand it. I'm like, now what do I what now what do I scroll through randomly if I don't want to see SEOs mouthing off about something on Twitter or LinkedIn? As so I go to Google Discover, I'm like, oh, the ink is traded for that guy. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Google are going hard on this kind of stuff. I don't know. It feels like this is almost a bit end of days for Google. They, they seem to be doing so much of this kind of like, quick, grab as much money as you can. Doesn't matter if the things are broken. Quickly fill your pockets with, like the ship's going down. Get as much money as you can. It's Maybe like, that's me being a little bit sort of like doom mongering. It's going to take a long time for Google to die, right? They're a big giant. But, you know, if they're yeah. kind of toppling and people are sort of stuffing their pockets with as much gold as they can get. They don't have a lot of wins lately. Let's put it that way. No, no. Then the optics aren't good. The problem really is there's nothing, there's no, there's no better alternative. Not yet. We're going to go it's coming though, isn't it? So, yeah, I mean, lots of yeah, people in so... perplexity. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We thought about talking about perplexity. That was a too much of a rabbit hole to go down to today, right? Like, no, oh, we're we gonna, we're we, gonna get we accidentally forgot to uh, obey oh, all the robots' protocols. Right AI news, perplexity mm -hmm. CEO, Aravind. Renivas responds to plagiarism and infringement accusations. So basically, in a nutshell, Perplexity stole Forbes' content, which I find ironic because Forbes is always doing something shady. So back on you, karma's a bitch. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but this is like two wrongs don't make a right, but they do make it for a good story. So <laughs> Perplexity stole this content from Forbes and Perplexity CEO, instead of saying, that was bad. This was a mistake. It, it's a glitch. It's a new product. These things happen. We apologize. We'll ensure that it doesn't happen. He does what all what a good CEO should do: deflect and say, "No, we're using other bots from other people to to get this information." And the other bots from the other companies did this. We respect your robot.txt file. These other bots, which we decided to contract out and are paying for, they don't. So it's not our fault. We're paying them to use the other bots that don't respect the robot to blame them, not us, not me. Didn't pay any of us money. Everything's fine. <laughs> this is like the AI equivalent of when you were at school and like, you know, you'd say, oh, a bigger boy did it and ran away because you're standing there like, you know, holding the spray paint can or whatever it is. And they're like, you right. know. Wait, did did you did you paint that wall? No, no, no. A, a bigger boy did it, and he was just here and he ran away. It's not even that. It's like saying, "No, I didn't do it. My finger did it. My <laughs> finger did it. I wasn't aware of what my finger was doing at the time. It was like you know operating on its so. own. Yeah, it's not great, is it? Ooh, these companies, you, you know, I don't know what's stupid or the AI or the people running them. Anyway, I have an answer. It's the people running them, right? Always. It's getting close. Real, I don't see people drinking urine yet. 
Yeah, how many AIs are drinking the urine? None of them. That's true. None of them are drinking urine. They're coming for us. <laughs> it's all over. It, you know, it's all over now because uh, AIs are coming for social networks. So uh, this is from The Verge. I, I don't know how I... I'm going to try to explain this thing. I, I don't know how to explain this thing. I'm frightened of this. <laughs> it's just like... A, oh my, this is where people are stupider than the AI. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so basically there's this thing called Butterflies. It's an app, and it's a social media app. You create an avatar, and it produces AI content that talks to other AI bots. I'm not sure exactly what you do other than create the thing and then let it go hog wild. So I'm not really sure, like, what's the point of this? I thought the point of social media was to sit there and waste endless amounts of time ignoring your actual life but you can't even do that here because it's just creating the content for you and interacting with itself it's like social media masturbation basically so my ai can interact with your ai so now i don't, I don't have to waste my ai can waste time with your ai wasting time so i get my time back is that it but i'm just but why why would you do this it's like you know all these kind of th all these things are just consuming so much energy and electricity and it's just you're just spinning off these things to ai to talk to the ai to talk to the ai to create pictures of the ai that stop it i mean it makes me feel really old because i just don't get it at all i mean i try to talk to my kids about that about get it and they're kind of like, my mm. lawn. <laughs> right. get off my ai generated <laughs> lawn <laughs> just I don't understand, Jacob. It makes me feel really old. It's like I don't, I don't want the AI to talk to. The, I mean, I, I don't. There's most people on social media I don't really want to talk to, but I definitely don't want to talk to your made-up AI that's just making up pictures of the things it didn't do. Well, that's my only real question. Like, which is worse, talking to an AI bot with another AI bot, or talking to actual people? Depends on the people, right? <laughs> Isn't it? Depends. Question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we talking like Reddit? Ah. <laughs> Not those people. Not those people. I don't get it. I feel like this planet is doomed. It's over. Like you talk about Google's going down. Yeah, humanity is toast. It's it. Yeah, not not if we don't torch the planet first. Super weird. Like, ah, hanging out the dinosaurs soon enough. I'm just waiting <laughs> for the meteorite. Uh, okay. Anything else on the machine learning front? Yes. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Not machine learning. AI. I can't call it. It's all AI, even though AI doesn't actually exist. And the AI stuff is really LLMs. You wish it was machine learning. Anyway, <laughs> Google is using machine learning to review local service LSA ads and automatically review all leads. So basically, oh man, Greg Finn went off about this on It's New as well. You used to, let's say you have an, an LSA ad and I don't know, like you get a lead and the lead's got nothing like to do with what you actually offer. The geo is wrong. You used to be able to submit a manual review to get your money back. Now Google's saying, oh, so silly business owner. <laughs> we will save you the time by automatically creating a credit system for you and you're like oh, okay that sounds good and, and if your credit system goes haywire i can manually then submit it no, <laughs> no. no. bless you <laughs> but we'll keep your money <laughs> google will decide if google went wrong and google tick will then decide yeah, how much of your money like, it keeps what could possibly like go oj wrong? simpson being the judge on oj simpson's <laughs> trial of course he didn't do it <laughs> Yeah, also the judge, but also the attorney and the defendant. It's fine. And it's going to be fine. It's so going to be fine, Morty. What, when has Google ever got stuff wrong with money and ads? Never. Never happens. And start shaking those things. You know, you know what happens? Someone sent out another memo about shaking cushions or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like tipping the sofa upside down. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's like <laughs> taking a chainsaw. I'm like, ah, it's like maybe it's really in the wood. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, how many more people can we sack? It's fine. Let's fire all those people. <laughs> AI can do it all. It'll be fine. We'll get like, you know, one of the, but what's the classic kind of thing about what's the job of the future? The job of the future is going to be the dog feeder, right? Because you're going to be the guy that feeds the dog that guards the servers. Nice. That's going to be it. AI is going to do everything else and it's going to be fine. It's going to be great. So yeah, that's, that's, what you, that's what you tell your kids to upskill in, feeding dogs. Cleaning up their poop? 
Or, yeah, yeah something like that. That sounds like a bright future for humanity. I want out. Okay. We're proud to have InLinks as a sponsor of Edge of the Web. Did you know that entities play a major role in how search engines understand and rank content on the web? Optimizing your content solely around keywords is a thing of the past. Now is the time to add entities into the mix and reach higher rankings by using InLinks, an award-winning software in entity SEO. Elevate your SEO with entity-based keyword research, uncover relevant clusters, and user intent for your content. Start with InLinks keyword tool today. Go to edgeofthewebradio.com slash InLinks to claim your free InLinks account and start creating content that will outperform your competitors. That's how you create a read, Aaron. It's like two slides done. We're good. We're in. We're out. So while Google certainly is, I might hate Barry's guts, we still love Barry on this show. Big hearts. We love um, Barry. We The more Barry, the better. And to make it really awkward for Barry, if you're listening, we love you so much. Hugs and kisses. Not awkward at all. First up, Google is testing black site link. So the site link is not the usual, hey, it's a link, it's blue. It looks like it's just a piece of text. So very clickable. Another thing you want to click on on the SERP or lack thereof. Does it take you away from Google products? Let's make it black. <laughs> it should be like every... <laughs> Everything on the SERP, but what Google wants you to click on is like grayed out and like really, really pale gray on a really white opaque, background. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, Google, we get it. We get it. You want them to stay on Google. We got it. Fine. Just kill the site links then. It's just weird. <laughs> anyway, it was a test. It's fine. Whatever. It's My okay. phone's going nuts over here because you guys keep saying, okay, Google. <laughs> <laughs> it's like lighting up over here on the desk. Like. <laughs> It's like, oh, Jacob, what AI crap can we give you now? Let us help you. <laughs> um, okay, Google AI overview FAQs, including why you can't disable AI overviews. You love the title of Barry's articles. What he's trying to tell you is Google released a new FAQ about the AI overviews, including how do I get rid of these things? And Google's like, you don't want to get rid of these things. They're fine. Also, we spent a lot of money on this. For an LSA ad, it's fine. Just take them. I think it's hilarious that Google keeps releasing these FAQs and be like, you have questions like, no, we have an FAQ on as if we're like stupid enough to feel like, you know what? This is really satisfying. The FAQ totally addressed it. My question is stupid. I'll go kill myself now. <laughs> I mean, if you want to turn off the AI overviews, I need to actually mention that I've built a Chrome plugin that you can use to disable the AI overviews. There are much better ones out there, but you can find mine. It's called Optimizing Search. There you go. Which, by the way, was very useful and very helpful. But when you put it out, the SEOs are like, why do I need this? This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't I just turn it off? It's like, because you can, anyway. So that we're not going <laughs> to feed those people any more oxygen. But uh, yeah, no, it's, I don't know, this whole kind of thing with Google putting out FAQs and stuff. It's like, it's against this whole kind of, it's very defensive. It's a bit like, you know, but we have questions. So you don't need to ask questions. Just shut yeah, up and trust the machine. You. It's fine. Trust the machine. It's fine. Trust Google. Give us more of your money. Actually, you know, like, don't give us your money. Just give us direct access to your bank account. It'll be fine. Right, right, Trust right. us. We credit don't want cards. your credit card information. Oh, information. Credit cards. No, 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 no. Just give us your bank details. Plug us straight in. Authorize us to take as much money as we want whenever we want. It'll be fine. You could appeal it via our AI. <laughs> I heard they said for Microsoft, we don't know. We don't want your court. We want Bill Gates' personal account. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We should try that next time I set up an ads account, and maybe I'll just give them Bill's details. You know, by the way, the what the uh, fourth question in the FAQ was: Do I have any more questions? No, you don't have any more questions. You are now <laughs> satisfied. You don't. <laughs> you don't have any more questions. Talk These to the are AI. not the questions you're looking for. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, AI overviews and Reddit. This one actually, I don't think it's Barry. It's Danny Good. Wow. Danny Goodwin is now invading the Barry blast. We love Danny as well, but he's not Barry. But he works with Barry, similar to Barry. He's got a goatee And works with Anna, who did the earlier story. She's, yeah, Danny's yeah. a good guy. Anna's also great. That was a great hire, by the way, by Search Engine Land. Good move. Anna's the best. This one is another story showing that there's less AI overviews. This is the data from SE Ranking. A couple of weeks ago, Bright Edge put out data. When Bright Edge put out the data, Mark Trapp from SEO Clarity said that we also have data 
all showing that there are fewer AI overviews. They all have different numbers. Like Bright Edge was, whoa, they're down to 15%. And SEO Cloud, no, no, they're down to 7%. No one actually knows because the tools are not built to track this stuff because you have to be logged in, not in incognito mode. So the SEO tools are not built for this, but they're all showing less. What the SE ranking one also showed was that the Google is relying on Reddit less often in the AI overviews than they used to, which corresponds to data that some schmuck named the Bordy Boberstein put out also from SEMrush showing there's a slight decrease in the number of URLs from Reddit and Quora in the discussions and forum SERP feature and the number of instances where there's multiple Reddit URLs in that SERP feature has also slightly decreased by like 1% since uh, April. So there's a slight crack in the Reddit armor, perhaps, if you combine the data Bordy Boberstein put out and the SE ranking data as well. Who knows? Either way, Reddit's not going away anytime soon, and either are the AI overviews. I keep thinking the Reddit bubble's going to burst, right? You look at all these tracking things, and it's just going up and up and up and up, and you think, this can't last. It can't last. But it keeps going. I mean, look, when you're talking about really good content that really helps people from people who are reputable, not emotionally disturbed at all, I think Reddit. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I have nothing to add there. I think. I yeah. also think that pigs have wings and live in the ocean. So who knows what I think actually makes any damn sense. <laughs> I mean, there's so many sites that, you know, Jacob just mentioned another very popular site that's full of very well-rounded, very well-balanced individuals. Jacob's a very well-rounded, balanced individual. Yeah. I mean, I trust him implicitly. I think, Jacob, you should just some give answers. Like, I'll ask you, like, I don't like what's We should create the Jacob language learning model, right? Just have Jacob kind of respond to things. Ooh. Accurate, Jacob PT. You can't go wrong. Be fine. Just connect your bank. Let it the magic happen. Worse. That should be the name. That, that should be the slogan of the thing. Like, it can't be worse. <laughs> it can't be worse. <laughs> Uh, you joke. I I can see that. I can see that working. Somebody's gonna be like, well, you, you thought this was bad, man. <laughs> <is> less bad. <laughs> less bad. Sign up now. Like and subscribe. <laughs> all I need is your email address, and then use your bank account number as your password, and I will give you all the answers that can't be worse. Thanks. I'll send it right over. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So last up, I don't even know where to start with this. So we saved the best for last. Holy crap. I think it was originally Joy Hawkins who spotted it. It was Darren Shaw who publicized it, and it was Barry who covered it. It's a team effort. Basically, you can manipulate a location of a business listing by simply dragging the pin hundreds of miles away, dropping it off in the middle of the Grand Canyon, and telling Google, no, 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 no. You thought the business was at 651 Central Avenue? Incorrect. It's not even in the same country. It's smack in the middle of the ocean. And Google's like, oh, all right, you must be right. And then if you tried to tell Google, wait a second, someone dragged my business location millions of miles. It's not even on planet Earth anymore. It's not even on a planet. It's on Pluto. It's a it's a dwarf planet. Google's like, oh, you're you're no, you're lying. And not only are you lying, we're going to suspend quite possibly your listing. What? Don't wait. We're not suspending the account that put the pin on Pluto. We're suspending the business. If you That's move right. it back, I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't even, even. I mean, there's so much stuff that's wrong with Google Maps and stuff. And I, when we were talking about putting the show together, I hesitated to bring this one up because you think, oh, we're just going to teach more people how to do this stuff to wreck their competitors. But I think it's important that people know that this is being done, and it can be done to you, and it can be done quite easily. And yeah, to Jacob, to answer your question, if you move it back as the business owner, you go, what the, they put my business in the middle of the nearby lake. That's not right. And you move it back to, you know, Fifth Avenue or wherever it is you're based, then you, your listing gets suspended because your your business location has been moved twice in X number of hours, days, whatever the threshold is. So Google goes, this is weird. Something's going on. We should suspend this listing rather than thinking this is weird because logic. this business has been moved into the middle of a lake. They think it's weird when it's moved back to where it was and has been for the previous 10 years. That's the weird behavior that gets you suspended. It's, it's messed have, up. I only have one question. Jacob, where do you think everyone want me to move site? <laughs> Missouri? <laughs> Wherever he is right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> just like find my iPhone and put it wherever he is. <laughs> Don't move it. Don't you do know, it. I, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> what are oh some of your competitors, god. though? Oh my god! Not touching it. Not touching it. 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 <laughs> oh my god! It's just like when you thought, like you know, like the stupid crap of a uh, you know plumber near me, Los Angeles plumber, plumber, plumber near me couldn't get any worse. <sighs> Or the review spam. Google, you're like dumb and dumber. You totally go out there and totally redeem yourself. Where was the... It's Jupiter. And, and you can really put it on another planet. That's that's a real thing that you could you do. You don't that. even have to put it on another planet. Because, like, so in local... Because, again, this is yet another separate system that Google uses. So local SEO, if you search by geo or near me and all that kind of stuff, it's a separate system, right? So that location is really important. So proximity to where the searcher is searching from is a massive, massive ranking factor. So if you are in a particular cluster, so let's say you and your competitors are all within a one mile radius of each other. If you just move one of them just two or three miles down the street, it doesn't have to be 500 miles away. Hey, I mean, you know, go crazy if you want, if that's your kind of thing. But yeah, stick them in the middle of a nearby lake where there's like not going to be so much search volume. Just two or three miles down the road out of the big competitive area, moving into the next borough, the next district, whatever it is, whatever it is, yeah. they're now no longer proximate to that searcher. They disappear of all those searches. They lose all that traffic. And you and lots of businesses this has happened to haven't even noticed. Sure. They don't, they're like, oh, our traffic's gone weird. I didn't see that happen. I mean, it's that, it's that phrase. You don't know what you don't know. Right. If you don't know to go look for that, if you don't, I mean, well, I don't know. Is there, if someone moves my location... Does Google even alert me to that? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. Oh, so I mean, if, not... if they add if they add a service or they like add lots of uh, kind of listings or they change your phone number things, lots of things you'll get notified about. But if they move you to the middle of the like you know the lake down you know hundred miles away, you do not get notified. Right. So if I'm not logging Why in you don't and, get and looking at my Google know. address every morning to make sure that I haven't been moved, you mm -hmm. don't know what you don't know. So if your searches fall off and your leads drop off. And you yep. don't really know to go look for it because why would you go? Why would you even think to look for that? Why would you think, hey, has my business been moved overnight by my competitor? Yeah, you wouldn't. So unless unless you're monitoring this kind of stuff and how much traffic so, you get from these things, and you see the traffic dip, then that might make you think, oh, what happened? There? And then you might go and investigate what happened. You can use so like lots of people use UTM tagging on the links they get from their GBP listing. Yeah. If that traffic goes down. That might be an early indicator of something is amiss with your listing. You might then go and look at it and go, oh, holy smoke, somebody moved me five miles down the road. So is there a certain time frame that is a safe number of hours or days to wait before moving it back to avoid getting suspended? Like if I wait yeah. a week, like it sucks, but I should wait a week to hopefully not get suspended. Is that a safe? Because you were saying uh, if you uh, move uh, twice unknown. within a certain amount of time, that's when you tend to get suspended. Again, yeah, it's not so fair that... and that's dumb, but just in the meantime, just to... Until Google recognizes that this is the unfair way to handle it. There may be a number, but it's not a publicly known one. Okay. So maybe Google has some kind of threshold. There are certain times that, you know, when you're, if you are genuinely relocating your business, it's recommended not to make a whole bunch of other changes at the same time. Like, you know, if you can keep the same phone number, you should keep the same phone number. Sure. If you can keep the same website, keep the same website, just change your postal address, leave that to kind of bed in for two, three weeks, then change the other stuff. You know, otherwise, you know, if you, change 101 things all at once, then that can flags or raises kind of suspicious looking flags for Google. But yeah, it's an unknown quantity what this kind of date of threshold is between it was moved on Monday and it was moved on Tuesday, that looks spammy. If it was right. moved on Monday and then it's moved next Monday, that's not spammy. Maybe, I don't know. So if you wake up to find your address has been moved, is it better to not move it, but better to report it as inaccurate maybe? As much as you'd like to move it and fix it, is it better to say, hey, this is wrong and, and like report it? I would move it back. So with the clients and stuff that I've seen that where this has happened and where it's worked, you move it back. The thing is then your listing gets suspended, but technically it still exists. People can still find you. You just then lose some of your access rights to then make further changes, to respond to reviews, to do all that, like other kind of useful stuff. And then right. you need to appeal your suspension. And But usually why. most businesses you want it me back. because I fixed your <laughs> stupid system. Right. Maybe be a little but usually most people that. want it back like as soon as possible, because that difference between how much business you get when your pins in the lake and how much business you get when it's on Fifth Avenue, it's big enough that you're like, even if it's suspended, just put it back. That lake business just isn't there. Mm, more depending if you're selling boats. <laughs> right. Fishing bait. Could be good. <laughs> oh, my God.
I'm a lifeguard service. I'm ready to the lake. <laughs> what a mess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks for that one, Google. Good job. <laughs> At least I get a notification now with like, your bank account is out of money. Right. It's about the only that connection, connection to Bill Gates' account didn't work. Yeah, right. <laughs> B.Gates Gates at Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he owns Bing. I'm sure it'll be fine. That's it for Edge of the Web this week. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel to get updated when we go live on the show. Um, Andrew, thank you so much for coming on and syncing this shit with me. <laughs> I've enjoyed it, Morty. I filled my pockets with Google Gold and I'm heading for the bottom uh, of the ocean. Nice. Uh, much credit to you. <laughs> much credit to you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Does Aaron say thank you? We'll find out when he listens to the episode. We'll see. He should. I thought it was great. Jacob, thank you. No one ever says thank you to Jacob. Thank you, Jacob, for managing Thanks, Jacob. this show. Hey, thank you, guys. Always you fucking the, happen without you. Like Reggie Jackson, you are the straw that stirs the drink. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, from us here at Edge, stay safe, stay well, and maybe you do want to be a piece of cyber driftwood. Oh. If, you're in, if your pin's in the lake, maybe you do. Yeah. I like Boy. it. Thanks, guys. That's it. Okay. Thank you.